I'm going to walk you through this review. Hopefully you have all done it and you are just checking your work. And if there was a problem you just didn't know how to do, then you know, you're waiting to see how you do it. This first one is review. It's finding the equation for the line of best fit. So we're trying to write an equation for the line of best fit. Remember, you're only allowed to use points on the line. So I'm going to use this point on the line and this point on the line. And I come over here and I look at my table and I can see exactly what those two points are. So remember, whenever we're writing an equation and we're given points, we want to use point slope form. So first thing I do is I find my slope. And this is just following my formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Once I get my slope, then I pick the point I want to use. I decided I was going to use the 4, 7500, and then I put my equation in point slope form, which is this guy over here. And after I put my numbers in to point slope form, I distribute my negative 1500, and then to get rid of the minus 7500, I add 7500 to both sides, and this is the equation to my line of best fit. So we have seen this sort of problem a few times now. It was on a quiz, it's been on a test, here it is again on a review, so be prepared to see it on this test as well. So remember, you have to start by using two points on the line, use your table so you know exactly what those points are, find your slope, and then pick a point that you want to use, put it in point slope form, and go from there. Okay, this next one wants to know which of the following is not true. So if I'm trying to figure out an equation, I know that I'm given points, so if I start thinking about point slope form, the first thing I'm going to do is find my slope. And I find the slope to be negative 2. So I can see that A is true, it has the correct slope. I look at B and I see it does have a correct slope of negative 2. I don't know that the equation's right, but I keep looking. Then I see C doesn't have the right slope. C has a slope of a positive 2, not a negative 2. So there's no way that C could be right. So C is definitely not true. And that's without me doing anything else other than finding my slope. Okay, let's move on to number 3. Number 3 is asking for us to solve for y in graph. So, I want to make sure that this equation looks like y equals mx plus b. So I circle everything smushed with my y. I add or subtract whatever is outside my circle. I undo my multiplication with division. And then I simplify. A negative over a negative makes a positive. 4 divided by negative 2 makes negative 2. I always plot my y-intercept first and then my slope is 5 halves, so that's up 5, right 2, up 5, right 2. So these last three problems have all been review questions, review from things that you might have seen on your last test, so be prepared to see them again. This next one is review 2. If I want to find the slope of this line, I need to make sure that it's in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and then m will be the number smushed with the x. So this time there's nothing to add or subtract, I just get rid of the multiplication by dividing. Once I reduce, I know my slope's the number smushed with my x, so I can see that my slope is a negative one-third. Okay, so main thing about figuring out what the slope is, you just have to know in your mind, you have to put the equation in slope-intercept form and then whatever smushed with the x, that's your slope. And this one's different than the last one because there was nothing outside my circle. That's why I don't add or subtract. I just go straight into the dividing part. Okay, this one. It wants to know which of the following are in standard form and they go through this point and has this slope. So you'll notice I already crossed off A. A was in point slope form and it wants these equations in standard form so I know that A is not an option. So I'm going to just talk some test taking strategies here. If a line is going to go through this point, that means if I plug the 3 into the x and the negative 2 into the y, I should get whatever they say. 
So that's what I did. I put the 3 in the 6. I put the negative 2 into the y. I worked it out to see if I get this negative 5 that they said I should get. And you don't get a negative 5 there. So there's no way this equation goes through this point because when you plug the 3 in the x and the negative 2 into the y, you don't get negative 5. This is a good test-taking strategy. There's lots of other ways that I could be working this problem right now. I just wanted to show you something a little different. So if a line goes through a point, plug those in and see if you actually get the constant that they say you should get. So I did the same thing with C. I put the 3 where the x is, I put the negative 2 where the y is, and I tried to see if that makes negative 14. And it doesn't. So I know there's no way that the line goes through that point. So then I tried it with my answer choice D. I put the 3 into the x, I put the negative 2 into the y. This remember makes a plus and 4 times 3 is 12 and 12 plus 2 is 14. That is correct. So since this is correct, I know that this line definitely goes through that point. None of the others went through that point, so I don't have to worry about any of my other selections. Okay, we had a question like that one on the last test too, and it was missed by a lot of people. So remember, standard form looks like this, where your x and y are on the left side, the constants on the right side, and this is just a good way of trying this problem. Plug those into your x and y and see if you actually get the constant that they say you should get. Okay, let's go to number six. Number six, finding x and y intercepts. There's several ways I could do this, but this is when I plug in my zeros. So to find the x-intercept, I put zero where the y is. To find the y-intercept, I put zero where the x is. And then I just solve those equations. Negative six times zero is zero, so all I'm left with is two x is 18. I divide and I get nine. If this is the x-coordinate, remember it goes first. When I do the y-intercept, I put zero in the x. Two times zero is zero. So all I'm left with is the negative 6y is 18. And then I just divide by negative 6 and I get negative 3. Remember, that's the y-coordinate, so it goes in the second slot. So the only one of these answer choices that is correct is the 9, 0. There's other ways I could do this problem. I could put this in slope-intercept slope form from the very beginning. But I think this is a real easy way of doing it just by plugging in your zeros. Okay, now we're getting into some new stuff. It wants to know the effect on the graph. So first I found my slope. I took, found the change in my x's, I found the change in my y's. I get my slope to be eight over two, which is four, 12 over three, which is four. I did the same thing with this table and I found my slope to be one over three. Remember slope is always change in y over change in x. So I can see my slope went from a four to a one third and so if the slope's going to get smaller, the line will get flatter. The next thing I looked at was to see if they have the same y-intercept. Since they have the y same y-intercept, then one isn't getting shifted up or getting shifted down. So the only thing that's different is the slope. And the slope gets smaller, so the line gets flatter. Okay, this next one. First thing I did was I found the slope of this picture over here, and the graph is kind of hard to read, but it looks like it's going up two and right one, so I found its slope to be two. So it wants to know what would the change be if this was the new equation? Well, you can see this one has a slope of two, this one has a slope of two. So there's not gonna be one that's steeper or flatter or reflected, but this one has a y-intercept of negative three, and this one has a y-intercept of a positive four. And if I was going from a negative three to a positive four, that's going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is a vertical shift up of seven units. So that's what would change if you went from this line right here to this line right here. So the slopes are the same. The only thing that's different are the y-intercepts. Okay, nine is multiple choice. It wants to know how these two compare, and the graph of 1 half x minus 3 is flatter and two units below this graph. 
The reason it's flatter is because if you go from a slope of 1 to 1 half, your slope's getting smaller. That's why it's flatter. If you go from a y-intercept of negative 1 to a y-intercept of negative 3, then you're going to be going down 2 units. So B is the correct choice here. It just wants to know how does this one compare to this one. So think of this as the original one. And so you're going from a slope of 1 to 1 half, flatter. Going from a y-intercept of negative 1 to negative 3, so it's going down 2. Okay, let's move to number 10. Number 10, I wrote two equations here. The first equation says that he is currently at an altitude of 175. So that's the initial value. That's your B. He's rising at a rate of 16 feet per minute, so that's your slope. So this was the equation I wrote for that. 16x plus 175. The 175 is what he started off at, and then he's rising 16 feet every minute. Then it says, what if you started at an altitude of 140 and you ascend at a rate of 20 feet per minute? So that would change to this. You're ascending 20 feet every minute. That means going up and up and up. You started at an altitude of 140, so that's your initial value. That's your y-intercept. And it wants to know what changes can be seen on the graph. How does the graph change? Well, if the slope's getting bigger, the line's going to get steeper. If the y-intercept's getting smaller, the graph's going to go down. So this graph will be steeper, and it's going to go down 35 from the original one. So when you see problems like this, try to write an equation for what you see. And if something happens per minute, that's your slope. Okay, the next one says which of the following is not direct variation? Okay, so remember, direct variation has positive slope and it goes, the graph goes through the origin. So direct variation is this over here. It has positive slope and it goes through the origin. So if I look at my table, if I find the change in my x's and the change in my y's and I take change in y over change in x, I get a slope of 5, so I do have a positive slope. And then I look to see, does it go through the origin? Yes. So this one is direct variation, but it wants to know which of the following is not direct variation. This next one, I look to see, does my line have positive slope? Yes. Does it go through the origin? Yes. So this is another example of direct variation. If I look at the next one, if it costs 225 per ringtone, then that's your slope because that's what's happening per ringtone, every ringtone. So this has positive slope and it goes through the origin because its y-intercept is zero. D is the one that is not direct variation and that's because its y-intercept is not zero. So it doesn't go through the origin. It does have the positive slope but it doesn't have a y-intercept of zero. Okay, the next one wants to know which does not represent, re represent the meaning of a proportional relationship. This is the same thing as direct variation. Direct variation, proportional relationship, they mean the same thing. Positive slope, go through origin. So, direct variation, yes. Graph with positive slope goes through zero, zero, yes y equals 3x, it has positive slope, it goes through the origin because the y-intercept is 0, yes. All of these represent a proportional relationship, which is the same thing as direct variation. Positive slope, go through origin. 13, wants to know which pair of equations is for a set of parallel lines. So let's talk about parallel lines for a second. Parallel lines have same slope, so I want to be looking for equations with the same slope and D is the one that has equations that have the same slope, so I know that those are the ones that are parallel. None of the other equations have the same slope. Okay, move into number 14. If I want to know the slope of the line that's parallel, 
first of all, if I want to find slope, I need to put my equation in slope-intercept form if it's not already. So that's what I started off doing. I circle everything smooshed with my y. I add or subtract whatever's outside my circle. And then I get rid of my multiplication by dividing. I can't reduce negative 4 fifths, so that just stays. And 15 over 5 reduces to 3. If I want the slope of the line that's parallel to this one, I want it to have the same slope. Parallel lines have same slope. So the parallel line will have a slope of negative 4 fifths. It's going to be the same thing as the slope of this equation here. Otherwise, they won't be parallel. OK. This one wants to know what an equation would be that would be perpendicular to y equals 7, or negative 7, sorry. Remember, all your y equals lines are horizontal. So if I want something to be perpendicular to a horizontal line, I need a vertical line. So I pick out the one that is vertical. Those are your x equal equations. And so I know b is my answer choice. So horizontal lines and, and vertical lines are always perpendicular to each other. So you just have to know that this one's horizontal, so you need a vertical one. Okay, next one. It wants to know which equation is perpendicular to the graph shown. So first thing I needed to do was find the slope of this line. So I had to look very carefully, but it looks like it goes through corners here and here, and I found that the slope is up 3, right 1. So if my slope is a positive 3, and I want to be perpendicular, I want my slope to be the opposite reciprocal. That means flip and switch. So I flip the fraction, and I switch the sign, and I get a negative 1 third for my perpendicular slope. And then I just look to see which equation shows me a slope of a negative 1 third. And A is the winner. So if you want lines to be parallel, you want them to have the same slope. If you want lines to be perpendicular, you need their slopes to be opposite reciprocals. Flip the fraction, switch the sign. Okay, next one up. I want the line to be parallel to this equation, and I want it to go through this point. So this equation is already in slope-intercept form. Slope's the number smushed with the x. So the parallel slope will be 2 thirds, because parallel lines have the same slope as one another. And since I know the slope and I know the point, I'm going to put it in point-slope form, which is this guy. And then I just start plugging it in and working it out. And this is what you should get. So as long as your equation's already in slope-intercept form, slope's the number smushed with the x, parallel lines will have the same slope, so that's why I'm using a slope of 2 thirds, and I just take it through the point, negative 3, negative 5. I did have a little fraction work in here that I had to do. I had to take 2 thirds times 3, and so if you have to, you know, off to the side, take 2 thirds times 3. Don't forget 3 is understood to be over a 1. If I multiply straight across, straight across, I get 6 over 3, and 6 over 3 is simply 2. So that's where my plus 2 came from. Okay, next one, and the last one, it wants to know which equation is perpendicular. So since it's in slope-intercept form, I know my slope's smushed with the x. If I want to be perpendicular, I want the opposite reciprocal. So I flip the fraction, switch the sign, and that would give me a slope of 4 thirds. So this is the slope I want, this is the point I want to take it through, and so I put it in point-slope form, and I just work it out. And this is what you get when you work it out. A couple other things. I know that A can't possibly be the answer because these slopes are the same, so this line would actually be parallel to the one given to us. So I know my slope has to be 4 thirds, so I know A can't be it. I also know that C can't be it because it doesn't have the right perpendicular slope because it, it's supposed to be 4 thirds. So I know A and C are out just by knowing that the slope of the perpendicular line is 4 thirds. And so B is the correct answer here. And that's it for our review. Hopefully you understand everything. If you have to rewatch re any of the problems, feel free to do that. Good luck on your test. Thank you.